So you, I've talked a lot about building a brand so far this year. And when it comes to building your brand, there's a couple foundational pieces that need to be in place, right? You need to have your ideal client identified. You need to have your messaging very clear. Your brand visuals need to be in alignment. Um, an aesthetic or vibe needs to be in line with the tone your voice of your messaging, all these little things need to be packaged nicely in order to form something called a brand identity. Some people create something called mood boards or brand boards, even like brand guidelines. If you're a larger agency or a company where multiple people are responsible for maintaining your brand's appearance. So everyone can be consistent on the same page as far as colors and fonts and uh, tone of voice and all these things. And so now you have a brand, hopefully at this point, if you're just getting started, I have all kinds of resources for you. Just let me know where you're starting and we'll get you pointed in the right direction. But today we're talking about how to build brand trust once you have already built out a brand. And this is interesting because I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs feel like, and I, I'm guilty of it. I, I was totally lumped myself into this category as well of thinking if I build it, they will come. If I build this awesome and beautiful brand, they will come and they will give me their dollars and everything will be hunky dory. But that is not the case. Um, and so there's a lot of trust that has to be built with a brand. And a brand, again, is just what you're putting forth. Um, you're creating a perception, you're highlighting certain beliefs and value systems and mission and goals. And if people are aligned with it, they will become attracted to it. And so when it comes to building the brand trust in order to compel people to take further action and maybe convert from being a curious person to a client, um, there's seven specific things that I feel, um, in my experience, really can help you build brand trust. And so we're going to run through those pretty quickly today, but I'm going to pause on a few of them and unpack them a little bit more. So let's jump right into it. Number one is to create compelling content. I am a content creation machine. Not everyone is like me and I understand that, but compelling content is super important because if it's, everyone knows that content is king or content is queen, whatever you want to say about it, content is important. And so the right type of content, you're, the goal is not to create a bunch of noise. For some people, that is the goal. Noise is visibility and visibility converts to dollars depending on your business model. But for most people, content needs to be hefty. It needs to have weight. It needs to have gravity. It needs to have purpose. It needs to be solid as far as statistics and data is concerned. And when the content is compelling and it's not just a fluff and noise and visibility, it becomes compelling. It, and compelling content helps people to take action. There's content that entertains and there's content that compels. And so you need to take inventory of what kind of content do I need to create in the first place? And secondly, if I need to create compelling content, is this something even I would want to listen to? Is this something that I would want to read? Is this something that I would want to watch? If not, you need to change your game up, okay? And so compelling content can, again, it can look like stats. Some people are very data-driven and they're like, well, if the numbers don't support it, I don't buy into it, right? Or if there's no proof in the pudding, right? If, some, if a product doesn't work and the reviews are terrible, like nobody's going to buy it. Everyone has watched an infomercial and bought a product and it was a piece of junk. And they're like, the infomercial was great. The marketing was great. The content was compelling. I went out and bought the thing. And when I got it, I was sorely, sorely disappointed. Right? So, um, compelling content can also look like sharing your story. And this is something that I feel like is becoming much more popular ever since, um, Donner, Donald Miller's book came out story brand. Um, people have really jumped onto this bandwagon of sharing their story. And a lot of reasons why, especially if you're a personal brand, and that's what I specialize in, is when people can connect with you on a personal level and they can see that you have gotten from point A to point B, they're gonna believe that you can also help them get from point A to point B if their circumstances are similar. And so storytelling and compelling storytelling is really important um, as a piece of content to have in your repertoire, especially if you're a personal brand. Personal brand meaning you're an author, you're a wedding photographer, um, you're a coach, you're a real estate agent. Somebody, something that um, you have an element of your personal self, your personality infused into your branding, okay? So 
Creating compelling content, number one, is the best way to build brand trust. Number two, engaging your community. Nobody likes to engage with a robot or a bot. Um, it is frustrating when you try to call customer service or customer support and it, you're talking to a robot and you can totally tell. Um, everybody wants to get on the phone with somebody in person. And when we engage our community as a human being and don't force them through these funnels that are 100% automated and robotic, you know, it creates trust that I'm dealing with a real human and hopefully this human is operating with integrity and is going to help me and help solve my problems. And when we engage our community as well, they get a sense for our personality and what we can do, especially on the fly. Um, if we're able to respond quickly and thoughtfully, that does a lot to build trust with somebody. And this applies also in your personal relationships, right? Nobody likes to be given, you know, the silent treatment if somebody texts you and they're like, hello, like ghost town, where did everybody go? Um, and so engaging in your community consistently and in an authentic way is a huge part of building trust with them so that they're more likely to purchase from you later. Um, hosting live video events. And so a live video could be something like what I'm doing here on Instagram, as well as on Facebook. Um, it could be on YouTube, wherever your platform is. It could be a webinar hosted on your website or some other webinar specific platform. But live video or even live speaking events um, does a lot for building trust. When you can see somebody's body language and you're looking them in the eye more or less, depending on if you're on video, right? and they get caught off guard or somebody throws a question at them and depending on how they respond man that can like win somebody over or lose a customer for life and so when we are live also people get a sense for like our mannerisms our personality there's a lot of nonverbal communication going on in video and in live speaking and so if you can give people access to yourself in that way that's also going to build a lot of trust between you and the viewer and your audience member making them more likely to become a client or customer of yours. Number four, being consistent. Man, people are watching you like it is nobody's business and they are lurking and they are watching and they are hovering in the background and they're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting to buy because they want to be sure that you're a legit person. They want to make sure that you are treating this like a business and not as a hobby. They want to know that you can produce consistent results for others before they invest for themselves. And so consistency in your branding, consistency in your messaging, consistency in how you show up. Um, if you are selling one thing one week and then a totally different thing another week, like, I don't know, like a food thing and recipes and, um, you know, some kind of food booklet. And then the next week you're talking about uh, finance and saving money which is fine, but if, if they're, and then you're not talking about branding and funnels, like if you're talking about all these different things, which are all great and good and holistically like smart to incorporate in your life, if they don't know what they're coming to you for, they're not going to come back. And so being consistent in what you're all about, especially for like a 90 day period, being like obsessively about one thing um, until it becomes very established that this is part of what whoever does, Joe Schmo, um, that makes it a lot easier for people to return. If you're consistent, they'll come back. Um, number five, this is sharing trustworthy links. Now, this is something that might feel a little counterintuitive to a lot of people, especially early in the entrepreneurial journey, but um, a lot of people will resist pointing to other people. And if you have a philosophy like I do, that there is enough to go around um, and that we can, with freedom and like, I don't know, just excitement and enthusiasm, point to other people, even in our own industry, even if they're technically a competitor, we should be able to shine a light on others without feeling intimidated. Um, and so even if they're in our industry or not, people don't tend to want to share other people's links for whatever reason. I don't have that philosophy, other people do. Um, but when we do share links, they should be trustworthy links. And so same with like affiliate links. Um, if you've worked with somebody before, there should always be transparency. Um, there should always be like, I've worked with this person or I've seen their work and they do great work. Um, so when, when it, 
somebody clicks on it and they do want to move forward with that person, they're going off of your word that this is a good thing, whether it's a product or a book or a service or whatever. Um, sharing something that's trustworthy that you really do buy into and that you're really willing to put your name behind is important. Um, because that's also going to build trust about like, well, if Brittany uses this and she's been using it for two years, a great example of a link that I've shared a ton about is HoneyBook. HoneyBook is my client relationship manager software. It handles my invoicing. It handles my contracts. It handles my communications. It handles um, my money, like my ins and outs. So I love it. It's been a great experience for me. An alternative is Dubsado or Dubsado, however you want to say it. Um, I haven't used it, but I know a lot of people who do use it and swear by it. It's just an alternative to HoneyBook. So whatever one you choose to use, I have experience with HoneyBook, so I'm going to shout about it. But if somebody knows more about Dubsado and wants to shout about it, and I'm like, well, this is this, I've heard that great things about this. Other people use it. Other people love it. I can with confidence put my name behind Dubsado, right? And so sharing trustworthy links also builds trust in what you're saying to be true. So if Brittany's being honest about these things, most likely she's going to be honest about those things. Um, number six, encouraging testimonials and reviews. So here's a little, not so secret secret, that um, has helped me to create a large database of testimonials in my business. I ask for feedback. I ask for reviews. I ask for a no holds barred, like give it to me straight. I'm a straight shooter, shoot straight with me. You don't have to sugarcoat things. And especially my clients learn this in the process, especially design clients. Um, if you're not honest with me about what you like about design, then we cannot produce something that you really love. And so I encourage like brutal honesty because you're never gonna hurt my feelings about design. If you don't like the design, you don't like the design. Whatever, the design can be changed. So we develop this trust of honesty of Brittany's not gonna be offended if, if the client doesn't like the direction something has taken, we'll, we'll pivot, we'll go a different direction. Um, and so at the end of our time working together, and I say, hey, was there anything about this experience that was a little bit off-putting? Or do you feel like this could have been streamlined a little bit better? And a lot of times, not a lot of times, a handful of times, um, we have been in a process and I've said, you know, this isn't as efficient. Let me change my process up. You don't have to do this workbook. Let's run through the questions together. And now I've shifted my workflow where I don't send workbooklets as often. Some people still want them, but um, part of my workflow is that we'll work through the questionnaire together because some people like to dialogue it out and it's actually more efficient. So um, I get feedback about what works, what doesn't work, what could have been done better. And if they're open to it, I will ask them like the, the good things. Would you be willing to write that as a testimonial? Because that really blessed me. And I think others who are on the fence about working with me, that would assuage some of their concerns and fears. Would you be willing to write that up? Just, just the positive stuff. I'll take the negative stuff and I will rework it so that my client experience just gets even better. Right? So I encourage user reviews. Um, this is also kind of a scary thing if you actually have a product and it's like on Amazon, like a book or something. And so when it can be a little bit scary to encourage user reviews, but I still, still, still recommend it because you cannot know what's not working if people don't tell you. And so this negative reviews, in my opinion, are great reviews because now you know what's broken and you can fix it. Everything is solvable. Everything is fixable. There's a solution out there. It's our job to fix it, especially for an entrepreneur. That is our job to fix problems. So lastly, the thing that builds trust is generosity. Generosity is something that, man, I have absolutely grown in, grown leaps and bounds in being generous, not just with my knowledge, but also with my time, also with my finances. Um, being a generous person builds trust. A lot of it has to do with um, something that is really nonverbal that comes through when we have what I call scarcity mindset, right? When we feel like there's not enough work to go around, there's not enough money to go around and I've got to hide my secrets and, you know, I'll give them just a little bit and then they have to pay for the rest, right? Building trust through generosity really looks like giving people your best. And then when they pay, you continue to give your best. Like there's no surprise about what they're getting. They know 
what they're getting because they've seen you be generous a ton in the online space for free in your knowledge. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have some information that is held back mostly because it's really overwhelming to give everybody a ton of information at once. Um, that's really the only reason why I encourage people to hold back any kind of information. Um, and so, you know, being generous builds trust. It makes people feel like um, you're operating from a place of abundance and not from a place of scarcity. And scarcity, I think really it converts into a feeling of desperation, like this person is desperate. Um, and that that is always an icky feeling. Never, nobody wants to feel like you're coming at them from a desperate place to get their business. So those are the seven ways that I believe that you can build brand trust starting today. Um, the first step would be to, I would encourage you to look at your content and ask yourself, is this compelling? Is this moving? Would I want to listen to this? And if not, change it up change things up and um, play around with it, have fun with it, turn it into a game if you need to. Um, but this is kind of the fun part. And this is where I see a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck because they see it as a chore and they don't choose to see it as something fun. Building trust is building friends, right? You're building friendships, you're building relationships. And so pursuing people in the online space really should not be too different than how you pursue them in real life. That's my take on it. You might have a different opinion. If you do, I would love to hear it. I would love to hear if you feel like um, building trust in the online space is different than building trust in your in real life relationships. So that's it for today. If you have any thoughts or questions, please drop them below. Um, but I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me this week in the video seven ways to build brand trust. And so if any of these points resonated with you, I think that you're going to want to check out what I'm about to share with you. I have created a mini course called Map Your Content. And in it, I teach you how over the course of three weeks to create about three months worth of content. And this is really cool because when it comes to building brand trust, when you're able to create consistent, cohesive, compelling content and do that in advance, it actually frees you up to do the second part of building brand trust, which is engagement, step number two. And so when you're able to create compelling content and do the engagement process without burning yourself out, I think that that's a win all the way around. I know that it was for me when I figured out this system. I know it was for my clients when they started using this system. So if that is something that you're interested in, especially as the summer holidays are coming and even the winter holidays, if you're wanting to lean back during those special events for a couple of weeks, this is the system that you're going to want to use. And again, it's just enough to be digestible, but not too much so that it's overwhelming. That's why it's a mini course and it's broken down into mini modules. And so that is going to be linked below. And I hope that you guys will check it out. I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks again for joining me today. I'll see you guys later. Bye.